Well, crazy story. Uh, very interesting story. Growing up in humble beginnings, uh, the oldest of nine kids. Never dreamt of the success that he's had, but was always preparing. When I was growing up, we used to walk everywhere, man. We rarely took the bus. You know, my dad worked like at the paper company, and my mom was the housewife. And I was just into sports, man. That's all I wanted to do, football, basketball, baseball. Atlanta was a very excellent environment, actually, for me to grow up. It's a black city, a lot of prominent black people here, black businesses, hotels, insurance companies. So early on, what your parents are telling you, you can be whatever you want to be, and you're seeing other people here that are driving Cadillacs and living in big houses and owning their own businesses. So that gives you some hope. I often think back to my, my youth, being the oldest of nine kids. Uh, that brings back a lot of memories. I was always a role model before I knew what the word meant. Yeah, we're heading to my house now, where I grew up. My mom definitely was the catalyst. She was 16 when she had me, so we were very close. Being the first, she was very strict on me, too. So my house was a uh, duplex. There used to be like a wall here. That's the wall I used to cry on after losing games. I'd come home and sit on the wall. But if you ever came here and asked my mom, where's Walt? She said, go down to the playground. I, I guess the most profound thing about growing up here was I was raised by a village. My grandparents. My neighbors had carte blanche to discipline me. By the time I walked from school, if I was doing something wrong and I get home, my mom was waiting at the door with the strap with me. She always told me that once I became Clyde, when I'd come home, she'd just say, son, don't gain the world and lose your soul. Like I would be home for two or three days and she'd go, you know, you're still the same. So I was happy that even with all of my success, you could see that I was still the same person. In this area, we were poor, but we never knew it because everybody was in the same boat. My whole life was in a four or five mile radius of where I grew up. Like my high school, my grade school, I walked to a go downtown, where I used to work. I talked about my life being shaped here, everything, but I think more than that, segregation was a catalyst for me. Yeah, segregation is, is oppression. You can't go where you want to go or do what you want to do. You're denied equal rights. So these were the things that my character was built upon. Because when you're told you can't do something and you're treated like a second-class citizen you look down upon, it inspires you if you have any pride at all. People can look down on you, they can talk about you, they can call you names, but they can't take away your pride. And that's why people now talk about my dress. I'm always dressed up because that's the sense of my pride character when I go out, I'm trying to give a positive image. So it not only reflects on me, but it reflects on my race. So this is my high school. David T. Howard. Being back there today was very provocative, man. Uh, poignant memories. The best years of my life were in high school. People can't believe that this was time doing segregation, so a lot of our students live right by the white schools, but they couldn't attend there, so they had to come all the way here. This place defined my character, my fortitude, my aptitude. This is where it all began. I didn't think I'd ever have as much fun when I left high school. I actually cried 
because I, I enjoyed high school. Obviously sports, that was, that was my whole life. Well, football was, I think, my, definitely my first love when I played here because in the South, football is king. That's one play I remember particularly. This play was called 22 Trap. I get the ball, and I turn like I'm faking it this way, and then I gave it to my back up the middle. He went like 50 yards untouched, man. Johnny Niners was my, my idol, so I could pass like 60 yards. And I, sometimes I could even throw with my left, like five or 10 yards. If, you know, like sometimes guys would have me and I could just throw with my left hand. So I had more scholarships for football, actually, than basketball. But I knew there were no black quarterbacks, so once I went to college, I was just only interested in basketball. There's our football field there on the lower end. It looks very nice now, but when I played, it was all dirt and gravel. The main thing that they taught at this school was education. That's your way out. So it's, it's invigorating and it's also devastating when I come home now. Because all the people that have catapulted me to this position, they're no longer around. And I see all of my coaches, my teachers, all the people that made it possible that, you know, I can't share my success with them. <laughs>